Um, let's talk about something kind of uh, scary here. Um, Donald, is it, is it Rubio? Yeah, Rubio. I said this summer. Now I, I got a little skittish with my prediction, right? You said he was. You said you not skittish. You said he wasn't gonna make it. No, I said I said if Donald Trump performs as well as he looks like he's gonna perform, he's not gonna make it, right? But I said in the summer I made a bold declaration, despite <laughs> despite Donald Trump. And yes, I'm going back to my original declaration in the summer. I said Marco Rubio is going to be the candidate because Marco Rubio is 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 just establishment enough, right? And he's Tea Party esque enough, right? He knows how to talk to the Tea Partiers. He's not a true Tea Partier, and that's why I said he would be the perfect blend of uh, the Donald Trump crowd and uh, the 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 uh, Jeb Bush crowd. I I, I don't know if. I, at this point, looking at tonight, I don't think Donald Trump has taken himself seriously enough to actually put a ground game to match his, his words. So it does look like it could be Ted Cruz and it could be Marco Rubio. I think either one of those, particularly Marco Rubio, is a scarier notion for either oh, yeah. for, okay. for, for Hillary Clinton. I mean, let, actually, let's bring it up. Where, what is the link? 270 to win, right? Is that what I need to go or, or, or real clear? Yeah, yeah 270 to win.com. Is where you get the electoral map, and I, I just want to say that he, he almost Trump almost got in third. This does not look good for him, and his speech is going to come up soon. I wonder if he'll Dean scream like Dean did when he lost Iowa. Um, but it's 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 amazing that R Rubio how Rubio was underestimated, and I think that um, it's going to be a fight, especially in the South where he's strong, and it's going to be a fight for Florida, especially when Jeb drops out. It's that the the Republican side is about to get. Very interesting because Trump is the candidate the Republican base deserves, but Rubio is the one they need. <laughs> Are you using the Dark Knight? Uh, yeah. It, it, oh yeah. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Who was that that was speaking there? I don't have my screen up in front of me, but go for it. I was laughing, but I do, but I can come in and just say a couple of things about the Republican side. Um, first of all. It, I, and I have to find the article. I don't remember um, where it came from. I saw it earlier today, but there was some interesting commentary and quotes from just grassroots Republicans. And I think that it hasn't been looked into enough. All the noise that Trump made, it's very scary and you know it, it, it puts a lot of people on, on edge. But I think the bigger question has been is, will the Republican Party, not the establishment, but the voters, will mm. they actually embrace Trump? And there's been a lot of, the article that I was reading was showing a lot of people saying they would, they they don't like it, but they might actually vote Democrat if Trump had been the nominee. You know, I so, read the same article and I heard about that, I was listening to that on NPR on my way home today, but go ahead. No, I, and, and I just think, you know, what I didn't take into account when I was talking before about the media and how they put their foot in their mouth and how they keep they, they want to shape it their way, you know. Obviously, we know that the media there's people behind the scenes. There's the corporations that own them. You know, there's a reason they're saying what they're saying. The reason Trump's gotten all this attention, as we all know, is because he brings in the ratings. You know, he's outrageous. He knows how he knows how to uh, bring the attention to himself. He's a pro at that. He he's he. You know, that's a whole other conversation. But mm -hmm. I think what hasn't been looked at with Trump is the fact that for all his outrageousness, is it electable? Is it something that, you know, there, there's plenty of people that say, yeah, we don't like Muslims, yeah, we don't like this and that, but is it something that enough of the Republicans were going to actually jump around? Well, you know, I, I, wonder how much of a, I wonder how much of a real picture Iowa is for, I mean, and Iowa is always a bellwether, right? It is a bellwether, but this is a different election, right? This is something totally different that we really haven't seen before because you, we saw the fracturing of the Republican Party really across the nation, not just in Iowa. And so here's my question that I'm going to throw to Anoa and then I'm going to throw to uh, to JP, who's just now jo joining us back. Do you think that this loss in Iowa for Donald Trump is enough to mend back the broken, the fractured party that he created across the nation. Anoa. Uh oh, did we lose you? Anoa, I think we lost you. JP, go for it. You know, I would just simply say that this was an aberration. Trump winning Iowa would have been uh, something that would have been totally an aberration because of the evangelical vote. Um, again, say what you want to. 
them folks were not really going to come out and vote for him uh, the way that you think they were. So I think that at the end of the day, this came out like it was. I think Rubio's finish was definitely something that nobody saw, but I think we haven't saw the best of Donald Trump yet. That will happen next week in New Hampshire when you see him put his foot on these folks and New Hampshire is going to come out and Trump will win New Hampshire and then, how they say it, game on. Game on? Yeah, he does have a commanding lead in New Hampshire. Uh, Noah, I was throwing it to you. Do you think that this um, that this loss tonight for, for Donald Trump will actually um, hurt him enough that it mends and pieces back together the GOP coalition that he fractured to his benefit? Oh, I think we lost you again. All right, uh, let me throw that to Niz. N uh, Niz, what do you think? Um, um, oh, oh, I have you. I have you now. Go for it. Um, nope, nope, we, we lost you. Niz, go for it. Well, I think uh, Trump, if he actually wanted to win this election, he could have done some organizing of some of his more uh, dangerous followers that uh, could have been pretty ugly. But... Fortunately, neither he nor anyone in his campaign has uh, that kind of vision. Uh, I mean, imagine Trump supporters uh, who uh, have a basement full of rifles starting to organize, uh, not in brown shirts, but in shirts, and start uh, policing, uh, helping out uh, on the streets. That could have thrown the country and this election into chaos. So I think that if he was truly serious about winning, he would have organized better because even he knows that he cannot do what he has done and then go to the center and try to actually win the general election. That's my take on Trump. Where I think that Trump is dangerous is in the fact that he is a big, as Martin O'Malley put it, carnival barker. He's a big distraction. He's a big bully, and the second someone turns around and uh, whiffs a punch in his direction, he balks and goes the other way. What he has done is that some of the things Ted Cruz has said and proposed are almost, I mean, like with nearly no difference, as bad as what Trump has okay. proposed. But no one has actually examined uh, Cruz into detail. And, I mean, I'm not endorsing anyone here, but Kasich seems to me like the only just, like, reasonably sane person on the Republican side actually running. He did a speech after, I think it was the third Republican debate, in which he said that he could not believe that this was the Republican Party where they were talking about dismantling Social Security and dismantling Medicare and Medicaid, where then no one who wanted to actually win the White House... I, I think perhaps uh, he could be someone you could live with, survive with anyway, but uh, Cruz uh, is dangerous, and so is Rubio in my opinion, and yeah, Trump, well, he's been a big distraction. That, and that's why I started the whole conversation is you, you actually thank you for bringing me back into focus. I think I went off on a tangent and lost myself because they are more terrifying to me than Donald Trump because they are legitimate. They legitimately believe what they're saying to the point – Ted Cruz more than Marco Rubio – to the point where they would enact these policies. Like Donald Trump wouldn't know what he was going to do until he actually did it, which is kind of scary. But I don't think it's as scary as having someone who firmly believes in these ridiculous Tea Party principles. You have to understand Ted Cruz is – the Tea Party. He was elected on the Tea Party principles. He represents the complete totality of their shenanigans and their ridiculousness. And so now he is won. He has won Iowa. He is that much closer. And Donald Trump did something that was very dangerous and to the detriment of the United States. He normalized Ted Cruz. Yes. Ted Cruz was an outlier, uh, uh, an outcast, but now he seems like the acceptable, palatable, uh, decent conservative instead of the extreme a-hole that he really is. <laughs> Noah, I have you back. Let me see if I have you back.